I imagine you've heard the voice of Tara Strong somewhere. She is a very famous voice actress who has been on a ton of shows. Uh, who is she? Was Timmy Turner in Fairly Odd Parents? I believe she was. Uh, she's Batgirl, and uh, she. I think she was also Harley Quinn. So she's done a lot. Uh, she was fired from a job. She says for being Jewish. In reality, it was for defending Israel in the wake of the attacks from Hamas. Now, uh, this one, this one strikes at the core of my being, my friends. You see, Tara Strong has me blocked. I met her uh, ten or so years ago. Uh, I've been a fan of hers. And all the world. I think she was. I think she was Ben Ten in in, in ben, ben Tennyson. She's like a, done a whole bunch of different uh, uh, voices. She was in Drawn Together. She played that princess and made a whole bunch of like, really offensive jokes. And uh, I met her a long time ago. And she is one of those individuals who did not know what she was signing onto when she began defending the cult of the psychotic left. And you know what? For this, she will she will reap what she has sown. I asked this question last week. Because I have many friends in Hollywood who are like liberal leftists, but who are Jewish. Well, duh, there's a lot of Jewish people in Hollywood, right? And I would ask them these questions about why they're backing Black Lives Matter when they outright say end Israel. And it's just like, doo, dial tone, nothing there. And I think the reality was they were only defending these issues from like BLM is because it was marketable and it was deemed socially you know, important <clears throat> of you want to get this role. These are the politics you got to have. And so I'll get into this in a little bit about a question that I once asked a friend of mine who's an, who's an actress. And uh, and we'll talk about this. So here's the story from the Post Millennial. Beloved voice actress Tara Strong was fired from her role in the independent animated series Boxtown after posting her support for Israel in its war against Hamas terrorists on social media. On Friday, she posted just uh, on X, just found out on Twitter regarding her termination. Well, let me let me read the tweets for you. It's actually a, a relatively old story. I mean, this was posted on October 13th. Boxtown says, hello, all just wanted to offer a quick update on Boxtown. We'll be recasting the role of Bill, previously played by Tara Strong. We'll have more info soon on open auditions. Thanks for y'all's understanding as we reorient and figure out the next steps. <laughs> Yo, I tried watching Rick and Morty without Justin Roiland, and it's just so awful. Like, there's a, there's a couple things they can get right that are funny. But like, the second episode is out. I watched the first one. It, it was really bad. Dude, I'm sorry. There, there are people who are trying to defend Rick and Morty because they love the show so much. Like, you can do the voices without the original voice actor. And it's like, nah, you can't, man. You just can't do it. I'd understand if like Justin Roiland suffered... Uh, a cardiac arrest and died suddenly. And they were like, we want to keep the show going. That would be sad. But in this instance, Justin Roiland was falsely accused of like domestic abuse, or something was exonerated and they took away all of his jobs. Now people are still critical of him because of some leaked DMs and stuff. I, whatever, man, I'm not here to, to, to adjudicate all that. That's wrong if that's the case. But like, you can't do these shows. Now, Tara Strong defending Israel over these attacks. She says, just found out on Twitter, this is what happens when you help fans get shows made, I guess. Fired for being Jewish. Glad I helped you get your Kickstarter money. Please lose my email address and pray for my family in Israel and in Gaza. I just want to stop right here and say, Tara, I'm sorry, dude. You are insufferable. You know what really bothers me? Yo, they're criticizing you over your stance on Israel and war. They are not firing you because you're Jewish. Okay? And it's like, Dude, that doesn't work on regular people. You can't just say that. Now, I still think Tara Strong is in the right to defend Israel. She's allowed to, and she shouldn't be fired for it. But just say that. I don't know why they try and turn into this. She has voiced Batgirl, Harley Quinn, as well as characters on the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah, she was uh, Bubbles, right? Rugrats and Teen Titans. Strong had previously written multiple posts slamming the atrocities committed by Hamas. And I can, I can respect that. That She says, for those who support the actions of Hamas, when, when, they in, when they infiltrate your hometown on your soil, break into Jewish homes, raping, beheading innocent babies, will you applaud them? Will you wave their flag while they slaughter Christians and Muslims who don't believe their ideologies? And, uh, and she got fired. Well, we have the statement here. I believe... Uh, Boxtown, the animated series, says, as some of you may have heard, Tara Strong is no longer involved with Boxtown or Bandit Mill animation and will no longer be voicing the character Bill the Orphan. 
The decision was due to a trend among Tara's recent online activity, including posts that promote controversial messages regarding the peoples of Palestine currently being affected by the ongoing Israel-Palestine crisis. We believe that our public platform gives us a duty to be careful when it comes to hateful messages, yada, yada, yada. This is not a difficult decision. More information about the casting of Boxtown will come within weeks. You see, the first thing I want to say is, did you not think to just like call her on the phone and say, hey, Tara, let's have a conversation. This is this is what you get, though, when you side with evil. Our hearts are with the Palestinian Israeli children and families being affected. People should be able to live freely without being threatened by constant abuse. We, we are hoping for the best. Yeah, let me tell you a story. Uh, I, I have a bunch of friends, as I mentioned, leftist friends in Hollywood. And, I, you know, I'm hanging out at, at the house of my friend who's got like, you know, a, a bunch of Jewish items. Clearly, they're Jewish. And I asked them about it. I was like, uh, uh, I, I think what happened was like they were explaining something to me that uh, mentioned some like one of the things they got from like a grandparent. And I was like, oh, wow. And then I asked them about it. I was like, isn't there like some kind of aren't you at odds with like you know, Israel and BLM and like the far left wanting there not to be in Israel. And they're like, what are you talking about? And like, no, that's unreasonable. I think people are just concerned. And, you know, I get it. And and I asked I, I asked this of like several of my friends. I said, do you know how many Christians there are in the world? And uh, they're like, I don't know, it's like two billion or something. It's like two billion. It's like massive, massive religion. You know, how many nations are Christian? And uh, the real answer is fairly nuanced. It's like um, like many, many, many nations are not explicitly Christian. They don't have like Christian doctrine as their like state religion. Some do. But in reality, majority Christian nations, there's, you know, several dozen. And then I said, do you know how many Muslims there are? And I think it's like 1.8 billion or something like almost 2 billion. It, it could be 1.4. I don't know, whatever. But it's like over a billion, billion and a half. And do you know how many Muslim nations there are? A couple dozen. Right. These are explicit. These are nations that are explicitly Muslim in doctrine, meaning they actually have like Islamic theology at the highest levels of government. And then I asked them, I was like, do you know how many Jews there are in the world? And you get different answers um, in Israel. I think it's like, what do they say? This is seven million or maybe the diaspora goes up to like 17 million. And then I was like, and how many nation, how many Jewish nations are there? And this is the funny thing. I'm not asking this. To make any kind of point outside of the far left defending Muslims and the hijab in this country when they make up billions of people, ignoring the fact that they actually, as Jews, are deeply concerned with with Israel. But when I ask this question, all of a sudden you can see in these people passion and they respond with one, maybe. And I'm like, how many Jewish nations are there? One, maybe. Why? Because Israel's at war and there's territorial disputes and arguments over a two state solution and what land actually belongs to Israel. Accusations that Israel doesn't belong there and they're colonizers and evil. It's not like there's a a country that has just been led by uh, Jews for a long time and is just there. Israel is in dispute. So it's like all these Christian nations, all these Muslim nations and Israel. I'm not saying you have to support Israel. I'm not saying it's in support of Israel. I'm saying this is the current state of what Israel is. My point is more so. Explain to me, Jewish leftist, your views on Israel. Legitimate question. I'm not telling you you're right or wrong. I'm curious how you rectify your defense. Or I'm sorry, rectify. How do you justify? How do you explain your concern and fears over Muslims in the United States and around the world? At the same time, your nation is under serious threat from Islamic nations and militant groups. And as soon as you bring that up, it's all of a sudden like... Boom, sparks go flying. And that's my point. Tara Strong thought she could stand with people who despise her and want to see Israel destroyed from the river to the sea. And the moment, the moment she spoke up for what she believed in, they discarded her like a soggy diaper. Well, that's what you get. Hey, look, man, we are reasonable people. I mean, like you and I, right? And we're willing to have a conversation with you about what you believe, be it pro or anti-Israel. And we're not going to, to, to condemn you. We're going to try to understand you. But hey, don't get me wrong. We could get heated and have an argument, but you're always welcome back to have another conversation. We got people at Timcast who are for and against pro-Israel, anti-Israel, whatever, pro-war, anti-war. No joke. <laughs> like, I think it's funny. People are ragging on Cassandra Fairbanks, who is friends with Alad Eliyahu. And they're just like, Alad jokes that he's a neocon Bolton bro who wants a unipolar American dominated world. Cassandra is an isolationist. They're friends. Cassandra was like, hey, check out a lot. He's great. 
because we are rational people that understand we disagree on a lot of things, but we do ultimately want to try and solve these problems and live together. That's what we offer and extend to you, Tara Strong. But guess what? She blocks me. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. She blocks me on Twitter. I don't care. Whatever, dude. You can do whatever you want. But you see what happens? Had you come and worked with us, we would be accommodating to your worldviews and perspective within reason, trying to understand what you think, to just live, to live and work together, to build a better future. But you decided to arm your, to, to side yourself with evil people who hate everyone and advocate death and genocide. I am not exaggerating. This, this post I showed earlier that, the, that young people, 18 to 24, believe 51% it's justified. What Hamas did was justified and 62% believe it's genocide. So what portion of that group genuinely thinks it's genocide and it's justified? Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? Jeremy Boring said, Years ago, a wealthy Jewish man asked me to support an organization he was founding to memorialize college students who engage in anti-Semitic organizations on campus so potential future employers could see their history. I opposed it and told him I found the notion anti-American and wrong-headed. College students are dumb. They're encouraged to be dumb. They deserve a chance to grow the hell up. Hit them in the moment, of course, but then give them a chance to find their way. He said, I stand by that right up until 10-7. If you went to the rallies or chanted stupid slogans back in the day, I get it. You probably did a lot of stupid things. We all did. But if you're still chanting from the river to the sea after 10-7, you're not a dumb college student being unwittingly used by jihad. Uh, you're, you're, you're not unwittingly used, used by jihadis. You're a knowing, willing participant in what your own eyes have seen in the rape and murder of Jews in the hundreds. You can live with it. I get it. There are a lot of people. Uh, and, and, and here's what here's what I'll say to this. Here's what I'll say to this. Um, a sing, uh, Jeremy Boring said the same thing. A single Palestinian child killed in Gaza is a tragedy and is horrifying. I demand solutions. I don't have them, but I demand solutions. I do not accept just collateral damage. Collateral damage is often an excuse and it's wrong. That being said, I don't have any solutions for you. This argument that Hamas can go in and kill 1,400 or however many uh, Jewish civilians and, 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 and even some tourists, elderly people and take hostages and expect nothing in terms of retaliation is absurd. And people are like, yeah, well, innocent people are dying because of it. Innocent people die when Hamas attacked. I've listened to the statements. Majid Nawaz is an excellent statement I was reading that he posted about the generational anger and how they and how they see it and feel it. But listen, I can only tell you this. I'm not involved. I'm an American. I'd love for there to be a solution. I don't have one. I can tell you that storming in and just killing civilians is not an answer. It's not. And you don't win because of it, because it's a generational problem. And you don't solve it by just thinking as the underdog with no military might, you're going to go massacre civilians. Because this is what happens. And now I'm supposed to be like, oh, no, Israel's responding like, dude, yes. Oh, no, that civilians are dying. It's awful. It's horrifying. Don't have an answer for you. Because even as even as of right now, Gaza's firing rockets into Israel. I'm seeing photos from people I know and trust people I've worked with in the past saying like rockets are exploding over me. <laughs> we, you know, they're complaining that Israel is firing rockets. This is what this is what this is what I see. People demanding Israel stop without saying anything about Gaza. And there and, and, and here's what we get. The Hamas hospital story lie. And then last night we had a guest on who told me that in the past 20 years, or what do you say? Like in, in 2014, you know, 2000 Palestinians were killed and 88 Israelis were killed. And I said, what does that what does that mean? Why? I said, giving me numbers doesn't mean who, what or why. That means nothing to me. And what happened is I get people on Twitter saying Tim Poole claims Dead, innocent Palestinians doesn't mean anything to him. I never said that. And this is why I despise the left. These people lie about everything. No, no, no. What I said was abstract numbers with no context doesn't mean anything. You're not arguing a point I can understand. I didn't say that dead civilians means nothing. Quite the opposite. Hence, I'm fairly anti intervention almost ex ex uh, absolutely anti-intervention and oppose war to an extreme degree because of collateral damage. But this is what they do. They lied about the hospital. They lie now. And I'm supposed to just sit back and watch them lie about everything every step of the way. Sorry, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in being party to your lies. Hamas did awful stuff. Does Israel lie? Listen, if you think a government is not going to lie to you in a time of war, I got a bridge to sell you. First, they will for, for, for uh, gain. For, for, the, for their own benefit, lying is a normal thing. 
And two, they would have to for security reasons. So yes, Israel lies. Duh. And they put up propaganda, of course. But the simple solution dictates that much of the stuff we've seen in terms of videos and statements and photos, it's real. It's just, I've done my due diligence and investigated. Yep. And then they say, what about all the innocent Palestinians that were killed 20 years ago? And I'm like, bro, I don't know what that means. Here's the, here's the example I give people. Five guys armed with, with batons smash out your, the, the, let's say you've got a front door and you got those like side windows, you know, smash them out, open the door and come inside. And you've got five people in your family and you have a gun, a big one. Let's say you got a KSG 25. That is a pump action shotgun, double, uh, double mag tube holds 25, 12 gauge, uh, uh, yeah, 12 gauge shotgun shells. Let's say you got one of those and it's loaded with buckshot. No, no, loaded with slugs. You know what slugs are? These are massive. Dear slugs, these five men break into your home and as your children are hanging out in the kitchen, they run in, grab one of your children and mercilessly beat that child to death. The the, the person who owns the home grabs their KSG and fires on the people who are in the the process of beating their children, uh, beating this child to death. And then someone comes to me and says, did you know, like years go by, did you know that this guy, he killed five people, five people, and they only killed one. And I'm like, what does that mean? Now, by all means, the story could be there was one guy with a baton and four old women standing by and they all got hit by slugs and died. And that's a horrifying story. Or the story could be that this guy was firing on five belligerents who were beating a child to death to save the child and was unsuccessful. You can't just say X many died, X many died. It doesn't it doesn't define morality. It doesn't solve the problem. And if people are operating under the assumption that, you know, it's as simple as Israel kills more people, then it's like, well, OK, then expect war to go on forever. Never ending. No, I think the issue is war is bad. We don't want Israel bombing residential buildings or, or whatever it is. The problem is the left is lying about everything. They're lying about what I said. And, and they're saying Tim refuses to criticize Israel. I get accused of being a Zionist and, and, and anti-Semitic all at the same time. It's, fun, it's funny. We have Cassandra being accused of being a Zionist because 20% of our guests on IRL are Jewish. And now because she's critical of Israel's, because uh, of collateral damage coming from Israel's airstrikes, she's being called, you know, like pro Hamas. I'm just like, you know what, man? But more to the point, to what Jeremy Boring is saying, the people who are cheering on what Hamas did at this point, you reap what you sow. OK, that's that's just it. But the divide is palpable. And it, and, and, and there and there you go. I will say this of uh, uh, Tara Strong. If you were critical of uh, I have my moral lines, I don't believe that anyone who is chanting from the river to the sea is doing is doing right. And, and we had um, Charlie Kirk as well as. Uh, Many people on the left argue that Netanyahu knew in advance and allowed this to happen for political gain. And I I reject that. Is it possible? Of course. But it's circuitous. And it takes so many leaps to get to that position. I'm like, what's the point? If you're making the argument that he knew, you are essentially advocating for escalation because if he did, that would require the use of force to remove him for being evil and committing wrongdoings which would result in escalation. There's, I don't know what the answer is, if that's the, if that's the case. Here's what I see. This issue drives people insane. Do you know how many people have died so far in, uh-oh, I don't even know what nation to call. Is it Myanmar? Is it Burma? This year is like 12,000. And I made a post about it. I was like, the conflict started in 1948 in Burma in Myanmar, whatever you're going to call it. Is it Palestine? Is it Israel? Is it Burma? Is it Myanmar? And I I said, people just like, nobody cares about that conflict. Hundreds of thousands dead, but everybody cares about Israel, Palestine. Why? It's cultural. It's religion. Someone responded, the Christ wasn't killed in Myanmar. It's like, we get it. But what I don't understand is why seemingly secular, moderate individuals and libertarians in this country are just screeching at the top of their lungs about Israel right now. And I'm like, have you given any consideration to Sudan or Myanmar or Burma or whatever you want to call it? 
I made that. I said, I, I, I tweeted, I'm going to get really mad about Myanmar. And someone's like, you meant uh, you spelled Burma wrong. And I'm like, you see, <laughs> you see. So that's my question. Why is it religion? OK, but what about the people who are not religious? Why are they not paying attention to any other global conflict for which there are many with substantially more dead, like 10 times as many? No idea. The, the 12,000 that have died so far in the Burma Myanmar conflict don't even move the needle for Americans. And so I'm just like, why are people so just hell bent on screeching and losing their minds over Israel? Look, man, I'm America. OK, you're America. Well, most of you are America. Some of you might be in Canada or some. But we're trying. We want peace. We don't want anyone dying. What's the answer, man? I certainly don't have it. Whatever, dude. I'll leave it there. We'll just try our best. Next segment is coming up at 6 p.m. on the channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.